my first look in a series of 1920s and 30s inspired looks for short hair. I actually chose to do this based on many requests and because I am somebody who has extremely thin or not thin but very fine stick straight hair so finger waving does not really work for me. However as you can see this is a pretty pretty close um, it's a pretty close relative to the finger wave. It's the pin curl wave and this is the thing that I always use when I'm going to do a 1920s or 30s inspired look because I feel like it is the most fail safe for my hair. In order for someone to do really really well for their hair to respond really well to traditional finger waving techniques they need wave in their hair. Look at any 1920s styling book, 1930s styling book, they will tell you that. That's why there were so many girls who had straight hair cut in the Louise Brooks style bob back in the 20s because their hair didn't respond to finger waving. So not everybody finger waved in the 20s. And this was just an example of how you can mimic a finger wave without actually going from wet hair to a wave setting. Um, my hair does not respond well to that. I've done a video on it prior and I don't even know if it's still up because it was sort of bad quality anyway. But I'm going to have to do a traditional finger waving video on someone with wavy hair because actually it doesn't work very well for me. But this does and I like this even more on me. This is a tradition. This is a traditional pin curl wave. So to get a 1920s, 30s look when you have straight hair, you can actually do that by creating wave in your hair. And that's what this video is going to be about. Hopefully you guys learned something from it. Um, hopefully it's helpful for those of you who are requesting 1920s, 30s style looks. And um, I'm crazy about it. I think it turned out really, really well. And this flower, or this uh, feather clip is actually from Bell Blossoms. It's one of her very first feather fascinators. And I really like it. I think it's it's kind of like a sea anemone, um, but I don't know if she still has it or not. <laughs> so hopefully, Heather, if you still have this, you can put it back on your site or whatever, but I really like it. It's super cute. Anyway, this is a tutorial for 1920s, 30s hair, faking a finger wave, and I hope it helps you guys out. This is my choice for my hair over a finger wave. So, Okay. I decided to start this um, to do narration and a little bit of text. My voice was a little bit croaky the day that I did this tutorial, so I decided not to do it as a spoken tutorial, but I will be overlaying voice narration. In this case, I started with second day hair that had been brushed out and was nice and straight, and then I am going from the back of my head. I parted my hair on the side, so you can part either on the middle, in the middle or on the side. And then I am doing a series of a row of pin curls from the back of my head towards the front with the pin curls aiming forward. And we're going to be organizing the pin curls a lot more than usual in this particular style just because that's what lends itself to a wave. So I'm spraying each individual section, um, about an inch section, and I'm wrapping it around one finger and spinning the pin curl towards my forehead in this first row clipping it in place with a double pronged clip and then I'll be creating a second one underneath that first row going from the front to the back and these ones will be spinned upwards, spun, spin, spun upwards so they will actually go towards the back of the head and this just kind of again lends itself to that wave it's not necessary with every pin curl set to be this specific but in this particular case it works out really really well and you're gonna go as far back as you can to the back of your head before you go to the next row. So we're going to do another row of downward or front facing pin curls beneath that last row. And those will go from front to back. And then we'll just continue that all the way down the side of our head on the heavy side of the part. That's the side with more hair on it. For the piece that's directly over the ear, um, it's ideal for that to be facing forward so you can create a kiss curl there, but it's not absolutely necessary. And then on the other side, I'm repeating that process, starting at the back of the head, spinning the curls towards my face. Um, actually, I think this first row on this side, I'm going backwards, so I'm glad that I caught that. <laughs> So this one, this first series, um, will be aiming backwards away from the face and then it will go forwards in the second row.
And I'm going to continue that all the way down to the ear again on this side. And then what my hair, a pixie cut is usually done in a graduated length, so therefore the top of your hair is typically longer than the back of your hair. The top and front sections are usually longer than the back of your hair. So because of that, it makes it very difficult to pin curl those short pieces at the back. So I'm using foam rollers for that section. I'm doing a medium sized foam roller, one row of those along the back of my head, and then small foam rollers right at the nape of my neck. And this took a little while to dry. Um, in my, under my dryer, it took about 30 minutes, but I have very fine, thin hair, so it's definitely going to take longer for someone who has thicker hair. Again, that's why it's important, I feel, to spray the hair from dry instead of starting from wet hair, because even though the wet hair will lend itself to a more sturdy style, it actually will take a lot longer to dry. So you'll have a series of curls. After you release all of your pins, you'll have a series of curls on top of your head that's gonna be really, really curly and springy and um, this in itself is very 30s, so hey. And after you shake out the curls, then you're gonna brush them out. And the thing about brushing out a pin curl set initially is that usually it looks like you're brushing all the curl away and it gets really, really daunting um, if you're not used to it. It can kind of make you wonder what all that work was for. Um, so it, of course, looks like I'd have no curls right now, but they will come back. So you're just gonna keep brushing them. I'm using my Denim Styling Brush now, and I'm going to start to find the waves and pinch them in place with waving clips. Waving clips can be found at your local beauty supply store. They look just like a claw clip, but they've got teeth on them. So you're going, and they have holes so that you can wear them under a dryer, and the air will still get to your hair underneath there. So I'm just finding the ridges of the waves that are already there, and then clipping them in place with the, with the uh, waving clips. And any time that you see a ridge of a wave, you're going to clip that ridge, that ridge in place and then, then comb the waving section, the waved section back and put a just a regular duckbill clip there to hold the flat sections in place. The whole point of this style is for there not to be a lot of volume. It's supposed to hit very snug, snugly to the head and very much almost like a cap. And I'm using a comb here because the comb actually will make it a little, make it lay a little more um, flat. This is just the way that we find the waves. It's just by combing over and over again, brushing over it. And with straight hair, this is really, to me, the best way to mimic something that looks like a natural wave that you would be harnessing in your pin curl clips or in your pin curls. Um, kiss curls will be formed, um, they'll sort of form naturally. You'll see the areas that look like they want to form by themselves. That was also something that was very popular in the, at the time, in the 20s and 30s, was to kind of take your natural curls and sort of structure them out and make them hit your face in sort of a soft way. So you'll see the curls that have naturally formed because of the pin curls, and those are the ones that I'm going to form into kiss curls. And then I will continue to structure those waves down the side of my head until I get it to a point where I feel like it's a nice kind of cohesive style and shape. You can also use bobby pins anywhere that you feel like you've got something you definitely don't want to lose because we will likely brush through this again. And brushing through it after it's been clipped and set this way um, is something that is totally fine. It usually will maintain the style even if you brush through it. But if you find a feature that you really don't want to lose by brushing through it, then you can always pin that in place with bobby pins. And you'll see me do that occasionally as well. So I'm going down and doing the same thing on the other side. Also, you'll see that with the back here, it's just very nicely shaped wave that kind of fits to the back of my head. This is not a super, um, meticulous style in the back um, so therefore it's not going to be something that I feel like I have to have a meticulous look in the back that's going to be up to you you can follow this around if it's not too difficult for you but for me it's way too difficult so I don't even bother with messing around with the back too much um, but if you're doing this on someone else you absolutely can be as particular as you like to be and now I'm releasing all of the clips. Um, I let it sit for a little while before I took them out, about 15 minutes. You can do it while you're 
doing your makeup or whatever, and just sort of reshape and form the waves as you see fit. As you remove the clips, you'll see that there's a little bit of frazzled areas, and those will be the parts that you'll want to comb back over and reshape. Um, but for the most part, the style will stay just as you placed it. I'm using a light hold hairspray. Actually, it's strong hold, but it's a brushable hold. It's from um, from Elnet, and I'm using that to maintain each thing, each feature as I perfect it. And on this side, I felt like that the curls were a little too plastered to my head, so I actually combed through them and then reshaped them a little bit using duckbill clips. You can absolutely do that as needed. And uh, that's gonna be something that you'll find you do quite often, and it, it's not going to, it's just gonna make the style look a little more sleek and not as like plastered to the head. Unfortunately, using gel and a lot of product, I feel like, especially on straight hair, it can really make the hair look plastered down, and that's not the look I'm after, so I don't do it that way. Um, but, the, but the clips really help kind of everything to hold in place and then you can add an accessory if you like after you've gotten everything where you want it you can add an accessory this is one from Bell Blossoms and I do believe she still has some of these in stock they're not in black and white but yeah I hope you guys like this and hopefully it helped you bye bye